Well, good morning and welcome back to another exciting episode of That's What She Said. We're so glad you're here today. We are in the She Said Studios in downtown Champaign. And with us today, we're very excited to introduce to you our new friend, Erin Tarr. Good morning, Erin. Welcome. Good morning. Hi, Hello. How are you doing? I'm great. I'm so happy to be here. I'm so excited. I'm like totally fangirling. Ooh. Well, we are fangirling because yeah. all three of us yeah. have internet That's stalked you. Like this we is true. all, we've this is all true. stalked you. And then we had to fake, like, oh, nice to meet you. Like, we didn't <laughs> see, like, your vacation photos and you're like, yeah, we didn't see that. We're just meeting you. thoroughly it's... through her website. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Quoting her to her. So yeah. yeah. Did you? Did you do that? <laughs> Not yet. Are you that person? I am that person. Ooh. Well, I can't wait. But so we're so happy to have you here. Yeah. So Erin, tell us about who you are in the community and what you're doing here and what makes you happy. So many things make me happy, starting with the fact that I live in Champaign, obviously, and I have a wonderful husband and three beautiful daughters. They are one, five, and eight. Wow. Bless your heart. <laughs> <laughs> They're awesome. They're amazing. I love them. Uh, they are a lot of the inspiration actually behind what I do. So I work with young girls and I mentor them and help them work through life and build their confidence and help them to be better communicators both with themselves, very important aspect that we forget about, and with others. So my three daughters are a huge inspiration behind that hmm. uh, because all of the things that I'm teaching, the girls that I mentor and the girls that are in my groups are things that I want them to understand and to live out and to be as they get older. So And so this passion drove you to found what's called Be The Benchmark. Exactly. exactly. Okay, and so what is, what is Be The Benchmark as far as a business and an organization? It's a business slash club. I currently have two small groups of girls that I meet with, one on Sunday and one on Tuesday, and they get together and we talk about life and I mentor them through what they're, what's going on in their lives now and what I foresee happening in their lives. Uh, sometimes we watch TED Talks about hmm. all the scientific things that are happening in their minds and behind the scenes and as they are developing and they're learning about themselves, they're learning about the world, and we're talking about how that impacts what is happening with them now as teenagers with their relationships with their parents, with their relationships with siblings, with their relationships with the opposite sex and romantic things or same sex and romantic things, either one. Mm -hmm. um, and we talk about those things and the big idea is to develop this relationship that will continue to be one of the voices in their head, right? Mm -hmm. So you don't no. get necessarily everything you need out of an hour conversation that you have with someone, right? But maybe three, five, seven years down the road, you remember like, oh, Carrie told me something about that once. I remember that. That might be relevant in the situation that I'm experiencing now. And what I love about that is that you are actively creating that voice inside mm -hmm. your head instead of letting those voices happen naturally through environment and experience. <sighs> you are taking charge or teaching these girls to take charge and, and make sure they have the reinforcement that they need to be the best that they can be. Absolutely. That is magical. I wish I knew you when I was a teenager. <laughs> I wish I knew me. I mean, I, I <laughs> had the typical teenage angst. Let me what? tell you. Oh my God, you should talk to my mom. Um, <laughs> but I, I want to know how did, how did this start? Like, what inspired you to start this and how long have you been doing it? So, I had a job that I loved in Champaign, I was very passionate about in the education world. And then I ended up having two daughters. And the job that you love becomes your life. And then you have kids and you have to make a decision. Do I put everything into my job? Do I put everything into my kids? Do I try to balance it both? And what it came down to for me was that I could not balance them both because I was so passionate about what I did. And so I ended up leaving that position to take a nine to five of a very check-in, check-out type of job that I could be really good at, that I could help people at, that I could still benefit my family, but that when I was home with my family, I could be home with my you family. Exactly. Uh, and so in that process, I knew that I would be starting something. I knew there was more in me, that there was something that I needed to start. I just didn't know what it was. So I started a blog because that's the natural progression. And as I started blogging, the things that continued to resonate most with me and with the people that were reading were things about my daughters, were things about mm -hmm. leadership, were things about uh, how to be a confident woman, you know, and those are the things that I just recognize this is my passion. And education has always been my passion and teaching others has always been my passion. And then having three girls and it being about 
being a woman and the conversations that I would have with my friends about the struggles that we're having at the ages of, at the time in my 20s, now in my 30s, um, but about the struggles that we were having so. as adults, mm-hmm. right, that we could have really used some more tools in our toolbox when we were younger. So we're trying to get those now while we're trying to raise our daughters. So wouldn't it be awesome if we gave those tools to our daughters earlier? Ooh, exactly. Well, so how do you do this? I mean, how do you have like kids, eight-year-olds and 18-year-olds in the same group? Or do you have, is it age specific? Currently, the there's a junior high group and a senior high group is how it works right now. Although as it grows, I want to continue to see more integration so that the senior high girls who have been involved for a few years can come back and start help mentoring the younger girls because mm-hmm. you know, how do you remember, you know, looking up to your oh, older sisters hero. or to the teenage, you know, so having them even more so than me as an influence who's who have been influenced by me, you know what I mean? And that's cyclical. And that idea of giving back, you're changing your world. So we have two groups right now, yeah. Well, how do the, I mean, if a mom says, I think this is a great thing for my daughter, do they sign up? Do they pay a membership fee? Is it, is it, you know, done through the schools? How do they find out about it? And what's the procedure for signing up? Absolutely. So first, right now, all of my clients are people that know me or that know one of my clients. And I call them clients, but that's so weird. They're friends. Um, And so those are all the people that are part of my groups right now. Mm -hmm. I don't do anything through the schools at the moment, but I am so passionate about figuring out the best way to make the types of things that I'm doing available for everyone, not just Mm -hmm. people who can pay the membership fee, Mm -hmm. which is what it is. And I do a membership, it's a monthly membership. And the reason I do it that way is because I'm not selling them a program, we're developing a relationship. And so you can't do that as effectively in, a 12 week stance or you know if I'm going to be a voice that continues to be able to speak truth into their life and wisdom and love we have to develop together so that's the idea I like that word develop because it isn't a one and done and often Mm -hmm. we want a quick answer we want how can I make myself great how can I make my kids great how can I improve this relationship and it is this whole process. process and I think it really benefits the whole family not just the girl I was thinking about you when my Um, seventh grade daughter was going to a dance and she and all of her friends were getting ready and the 11 year old sister you know I'm taking pictures and then of course to the 13 year old's horror in all the pictures the 11 year old is in the background (laughs) doing air guitar (laughs) photo bombing them but I thought she's watching and listening to every bit of this just like my little sister did to me and I thought the conversation that my older daughter and her girls were having were pretty reflective of the conversation I have with those other girls' moms. And so the pressure of, they are always listening. And what I say about myself, about my body, about my relationships, other women, they are logging all of that away. So I think that what you do, it obviously benefits the girls, but I think the moms are listening. Then it's on the reverse and we're going, oh my gosh, I can't, you know, I never realized I had that kind of power. Mm -hmm. That's such a tender time in life, Mm -hmm. such a vulnerable, influential time where you're developing your self-esteem and and I think that's what you've honed in on and speaking of benefiting the whole family Erin's taking this one step further while she's mentoring the girls she's created a Facebook family called be the benchmark mod Mod squad Squad. (laughs) and mod stands for mothers of daughters Mm -hmm. wow yeah. And so she's also built a networking group where moms who have daughters in their teen and tween years or younger like mine um, can get together and talk about the problems that the mothers of daughters face. Ah, uh, and that's actually how I met Erin. That's <laughs> how Erin and I met and, and we had the great yeah. fortune of coming together and, yeah. and wanting to share your story because it's going to hopefully influence a lot of people in the community and open some doors and open some eyes. I think I just read last week that moms of tweens and teens and especially that middle school time that it's the loneliest time for mothers which you would I had always assumed it would have been the toddlers Mm -hmm. when you're knee-deep in diapers and you have no one around like but apparently (laughs) it's the middle school years and and I think it's worse well because at least when they're toddlers they which some you know it can backfire sometimes and you're like six inches where nobody touches me like but at least you're getting that attention and they want to and then they get to middle school which is why it's great to have someone like you because then you think, okay, maybe they don't want mom mm-hmm. up in their business all the time, mm-hmm. but they will listen when it comes from you. And they need somebody. 
that's mm-hmm. got pretty strong values that can kind of lead them through that until mom comes back into the picture. I remember when Sarah was in high school and Gary would pull in the driveway and he could feel the heat coming from the house. <laughs> and we had a couple of years where we didn't get along so well, and Sarah and I. Yeah. Um, and so he would just turn around and leave again because he could, it was, <laughs> it was an ugly, it was an ugly period. And then it got better and now we're best friends again. But there was a time in there where I would not have been able to make any any headway. Right. There's a time to be best friends, and the stage I'm in right now is not that time. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, when right. she's 42, right. Right. Yeah. we'll we'll meet back up. Yeah. But <laughs> 42, yeah. maybe yeah. a little earlier. Yeah. yeah, hopefully earlier. I have a question for yeah. you. I was kind of going through your website in preparation for today, and there was a story in there about shamooing. Can you can you tell us what shamooing is? Absolutely. Um, and this is in no way an endorsement of any practices that the SeaWorld operation you know, Shamu the disclaimer. Whale. Exactly. Oh my goodness. Yeah. yeah. But so it is about the Shamu, the whale. And so the the picture in your mind is that this Shamu, this ginormous whale, jumps out of the water and over people and does these wonderful things. And how did they do that? Because sometimes they do that in a while, but how do you train them to do that? And the way they train them to do that is they put the rope at the bottom of the pool. And every time Shamu swims over the rope by accident, they give him a treat. And slowly they raise the rope. And each time he goes over the rope, he gets the treat until finally it's up out of the water, feet. I don't know how many feet he jumps or she jumps. It, she yep. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> um, but they get the idea. Like this is how they get to success, right? And so the idea with our children and with our daughters and with creating the relationship with our daughters is for example, when your daughter is 11, 13 years old, you expect them to get up, to get dressed, to brush their teeth, to get their own breakfast, to have their homework done, all these types of things. It's just wait, an expectation what? at that yeah. age. Wait, what? <laughs> I've been doing it wrong. <laughs> no. Yes. You so do. you have this expectation, right? That and so when nice. it doesn't happen, all hell breaks loose in your house, right. right? Because you're like, oh my gosh, you are 13 years old. Why are you not? Right. Yep. This is what happens. Instead, the Shiamu technique would be. Look at all the things they did do this morning. They actually didn't fight with their brother and sister. Yay. They actually did put their shoes in their closet for a change. Wow, yay, you know. Mm-hmm. Or maybe they put their shoes in their closet every day. But the point is recognizing all the things that we usually take for granted, you know, and continuing to give positive pressure to those things and eventually they'll get there, right? That's that's the idea. The way Shamu is, eventually they'll get there. And I can attest to this, both in an educational setting as well as in my own home, yeah. that it does work. You have to, re- we have to remind ourselves, you know. And it's hard to, I think, with multiple siblings because I have a five-year-old and an eight-year-old, and so the the five-year-old thinks that she's eight, and so sometimes I accidentally <laughs> treat her like mm-hmm. she's eight, and I'm like, oh wait, yeah. she's just five. She's yeah. not even in kindergarten yet. Like. How can I expect her? I mean, she packs her own lunch every day. She does so many wonderful things. So when she doesn't do something, yep. I'm a freaking mess, right? And then I'm like, wait, she's amazing. Let me tell her how she's amazing. And then it multiplies itself. It's a, when she recognizes that you recognize how awesome she is, there's just this calm and this peace that comes over her as well and makes her want to do better. Well, and isn't it part of the point that, you know, when you start at the bottom and you're kind of building one on one on one, if you start with the little things, you can't expect them to jump the first day. Exactly. You can't expect right. to say, you know, you're gonna floss right if you've never flossed before. So so you just gotta build on one and, and celebrate mm-hmm. the successes yes. on the way up. And with teenagers, you also can't expect them to jump today, even if they jumped yesterday. It's not a guarantee. Yeah. I'm sorry, Carrie. I know this hurts. Every hard. day. Oh, and you know what? The point no. is, is we're here for each other. And that's yes. why that's why we've created, that's what she said, um, to, can, to have a place where we can have these conversations. You know, you have teenage girls. I have toddler girls who are going to be teenage girls. You have Elementary. created a beautiful um, world for teenage girls to to build and grow and learn and grow. But, you know, how did you learn... <laughs> How did you get to the point where you knew teenagers needed this? Obviously, there's a story here somewhere. Well, there is a quote out there somewhere that says, be the person you needed when you were that age or something along those lines. I totally misquoted it, right? But that is a quote, right? Mm -hmm. And so there is a very specific time of heartache in my life where I really could have used some sort of relationship that would have advised me how to handle it more, 
I don't Drum know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I better wait. So, so senior year, picture it. Senior year, uh, all the fun stuff, senior superlatives, and all these things going on, right? And uh, dating my boyfriend and getting ready for prom and all the graduation, end of year things, whatever. Picked out this beautiful dress. It's still hanging in my closet. It's silver. It's ball gown, which was before ball gowns were like in. <laughs> like I was cutting edge because, and I just was in love with my dress. Um, and so the night before prom, uh, my boyfriend and I and two other friends, we lived in a small town, so we went to the big city to buy my shoes for prom because I still didn't have shoes. So we all went to the mall and we went out to eat and da 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 da. Um, car on the way home, conversation just kind of stilted, whatever. And um, I just got this weird feeling, and I'm like, what's what's going on? Something's weird. And so no, no, um, no. the people that were driving, the the other couple that we were with that were driving, dropped us off at his house, and I don't remember the conversation vividly, but I do remember the result, which is what he dumped me the day before prom. Oh, no, no, after no. the shoes. After I bought the shoes, I mean. <laughs> Were the shoes used as a weapon <laughs> at, at any point? I was just so devastated. And I just, I mean, honestly, now I blame his mom. What kind of woman raises their son to dump someone the day before prom? Fake it for one, 24 yeah. more hours. What's well, the big deal? I think, oh, sorry, I, I think any <laughs> mom can, like, we can wind up on any side of it. It's and true. you could raise it's a true. kid like that. But I say all the time, my kids might grow up to be bleeps, but I'm going down with a fight. You know, like at that point, you go, you idiot, you get back over there. This is a life lesson. You get back over there Apologies. on your knees and you say, I am so sorry. We will get through this. And in 48 hours, we're broken up. Right. But, right. Oh. but how did that color your outlook on I just, your teenage years and your relationships? I remember feeling like I needed a boyfriend, right? I needed somebody to validate that I was pretty enough, that I was oh. interesting enough, that I was blank enough, right? And so in retrospect, I would never have been dating him to begin with had I had a true sense of who I was and where I was headed, right? Because his goals for life, senior year in high school, his goals for life were much different than my goals for life. Uh, I didn't need to be dating anyone. I didn't need to have that validation. I could have gone to prom with friends. I could have gone to prom with just a guy, you know, mm -hmm. not a boyfriend. But I had this need for validation that I didn't feel like I had from other places that I don't want girls to feel like they need. And that's I, part I of would your love, inspiration yes, now for yes. what you've created and, and articulating that. Yes. Because you think it's a given, but until someone says to girls or you say to them, you're enough. You, yes. you are enough. That's exactly what yeah. I was going to say. Exactly. You are enough. Yeah. You are yeah. enough. I think that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think we've all um, been inspired and uplifted today. And I'm thrilled that you've created this and I hope it continues to grow so that when my angsty teenage girls uh, don't want to talk to mom I can ship them up to your house for a couple hours a week but that's, great. Um, that's down the road but Erin thank you so much for Absolutely. sharing your story thank and you sharing your inspiration that. with us and um, we can't wait to see what happens next thanks so welcome that's what and she said. until next time <laughs> That's what, that's, what that's what she said. That's what she said. No, that's what she said. She that's said. what I said. That's, that's what, what you she said. said. Yeah. And that was back to the guest. Yeah. That's what she said. That's right. Yeah. For today's episode, we'd like to send out a special thanks to Bing Champagne for the She Said Studio Space, Texture Home for a lovely set, and Columbia Street Roastery for providing our coffee. Thank you.